Body and body. I'm going to start off on something that's really generic. I'm actually going to talk about weight while you come up with some questions on the in body. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting, and so, I wish I could remember who it was who said it the other day, but she said over the like over the last six weeks, I think her weight had only changed half a kilogram. And she said before I joined Abfab, I'd have been so miserable. I think actually her weight might have might have increased. Um, half a kilo but she says because I'm now at Abfab I'm so much more aware of what is important when I'm on those scales like on the embody how it's so different to the scales at home because her visceral fat had come down at least one point maybe two her muscle um, mass had gone into a healthy reading um, there were quite a few different things like her body fat mass had come down and whilst she, I don't think she'd done her measurements she knew that her clothes were fitting her better um, and that's why it's really important to not focus purely on that one figure of weight because what is weight? Weight is your relation of your mass your, uh, your, it's your mass which is your relation to gravity pulling you down to earth okay it is purely or one thing but it's far more complex than being just a one thing okay it's not just the yes thanks Cassie <laughs> um, or if it went up you are clearly just on um, you're either a just on the borderline or um, or it's just where it's had a new update and it's just readjusted that visceral fat scale um, but we'll have a little look at that as the next week or so goes on because you're doing really great and we'll talk about that in this one as well so weight can be your weight is your body everything within your body when you stand on the scales um, creates that reading called weight and um, you know you can be the same weight as somebody else you could take I could be the same weight as somebody else but have a completely different body composition and health okay so um, if somebody was 35 kilos of muscle but the other person was 35 kilos of fat and 25 kilos of muscle, you know, likewise, um, they're going to look very different even though overall they weigh the same. So don't forget muscle is much, much, um, takes up much less space per kilogram than fat does. Okay, so that's why somebody who weighs the same can look much slimmer than somebody else who weighs the same than who has a lot more fat. Um, okay, so what else affects weight? Water and carbohydrates, glycogen, both massively affect your weight. What that means is that if you are just looking at that big number weight it is very much dependent on how much water is in your body don't forget we're, we're like 70 percent water anyway but if you have had more water um or it's a certain time of the month or you're having a flare-up of certain health issues um certain hormonal things are going on your body is more prone to holding on to water at certain times of the month um, or because of those hormonal changes. The other element to be aware of is if you had not eaten many carbs, so if you'd been doing something like a keto type diet um, and you um, don't eat any carbs, um, you actually weigh a lot less. This is purely weight. This is not your measurements. This is not about your bust, your hips and your waist measurements. This is just purely that number on the scales. And the reason for that is, is if you're on a diet where you eat no carbs at all, um, you don't have any stores of glycogen in your muscles. So glycogen in, is, it's what, we, it's what we convert into energy. It's our energy stores in our muscles. And the more glycogen you have in your stores, um, for every gram of glycogen, it's four grams of water. Um, so that will massively affect your weight overall. Just weight. I'm not telling you to not eat any carbs. I'm just saying that if you've eaten carbs, your body is going to be storing a lot more water throughout the entire body, like all over.
quite simply. Then if you have a phase and you completely cut it all, a bit like the old Atkins diet, right, I'm cutting it, I'm cutting it, I'm cutting it, I'm going to lose loads of weight, and you do, you've lost loads of weight through glycogen um, in your muscles and things like that. What other things affect weight? So I've talked about that water. And it's not just water as in water retention. As that, that time of the month you get that as well. But I'm talking about the water and the glycogen stores in the muscles um, that holds more water in, intracellularly. There you go. That's a scientific word for you. Um, so that is far more than just, um, than just feeling a bit bloated. You know, this is water throughout your entire body. It is not unhealthy. It is not does not affect your health at all. It's brilliant. It is there for your energy for when you need to do things. So do not this is one of the reasons why we do not focus on weight. What else? Something else I'm gonna be this is like maybe a little bit TMI. So mm, oh it's that time of day. If you're eating your dinner and you don't like toilet talk, please feel free to pause and join later. Um what you've got in your what you've eaten for the last few days if you haven't eaten a lot of fiber um that's going to affect your overall weight if you've eaten loads of fiber it's going to affect your overall weight what you've been eating and how fast your body processes it processes it and how quickly it moves through your bowels and how regularly you've been able to go to the toilet all of those things matter if you had a really big meal and haven't cleared it all and it's sitting there in your stomach and it's holding water while the body is holding water or fluids and acid and all those things that help break it down, that's going to add to your weight. Okay. Um, we, if you've had, a, if you've been really well hydrated, you're going to be have more water throughout your body. You're going to have water in your blood, water in your stump, you know, again, it's going to add. Okay. One of the things, what else do I want to chat to you about? I'm going to go through any comments. It's nice to see there's a few coming through. Um, another one I wanted to chat to you about is focusing on one result. Comparing one week to the previous week. Can we, can we please just stop? Stop doing that for me? Because one reading, one reading, one hot day does not a summer make. Okay, just remember that doesn't even most of the time the readings are right but every now and then you might have just done something breathed silly i don't know i'm sure it isn't breathing but when you're actually on the in body you should not talk or laugh you should actually just stand there and be still okay if you move shift something's going on maybe you just changed your grip maybe you wiggled your foot maybe you sniff i don't know Maybe just one day, the machine has a little blip. It is, you know, nothing is 100% perfect. Do not ever judge one result, okay? Don't forget we have hormones and all of those things going through our body. Our bodies go through cycles. There's some really interesting research on training through your cycles as well and how that affects um, your overall performance. And, you know, that's going to be reflected on things like the in-body. Just remember, sometimes those lines, they look hang on, really steep, but actually, you're sometimes looking at like 400 grams. Like, go and have a look. 400 grams, a tin of soup. I mean, not to get graphic again, but is that about a body movement? A number one or a number two? Most likely. Okay? Like, let's not sweat the small stuff. Let's look at these longer term trends. Um, I've been, which is why we ask you to weigh regularly. Not to obsess about it but so that you draw a longer longer graph, something you can get much more familiar with and we can see the trends, okay? Because um, the trend is what we're looking for, the trends of those graphs going in the right direction, the long-term consistency. You know, that's, that's those things I was saying to you about, it's not just about six weeks, it's about what you do long-term and consistently. We don't want you to have a diet that is so strict that you don't feel like you can live. You need to be able to live you need to have a lifestyle you can manage, but you also need to be accountable and stick to that, okay? And that using the scales in the in-body is about that. It's about that long-term consistency. Okay, I'm just going to read some of these. See, Michelle has jumped on board. Hey, Sam, hope you're well. Yes, exactly. Do not let one measurement or one 
one or two measurements control how we feel because actually we've already done that it's done we just need to move on feel good about what you're going to put into place to get things on where you want them to okay we own ourselves not that machine and the results okay and also if you've been bad since friday you've been bad since friday that's now done what are you aiming for what do you want to achieve let's have a look at that and let's go back to the plan get the meals prepped try and understand what you did and why and make sure that when you are on the plan make sure you're not being too good and by that i mean that you're not make sure that you're not stripping so much back that you don't feel that you can stick to it okay because that's what we need to stay accountable and achievable all right let's chat a little bit more about body so what do we at uh, the in body so um we have any question i've got i'm guessing like visceral fat here is something a lot of you have questions about so in our body we have visceral fat and we have subcutaneous fat subcutaneous fat is what's around the muscles um, under the skin so subcutaneous underneath the cutaneous level of the skin it's much more superficial it's quite superficial it's around the body uh, in all sorts of places it's the fat in your face you've got fat everywhere we need fat everywhere what actually let's have a little quiz what is the guideline for body fat percentage for females does anybody know no google cheating please let's just keep you engaged what is your body what should the guidelines be for a female's body fat percentage and then i'll carry on chatting to you about fat so but so while you talk to me about that subcutaneous fat around the surface we also have visceral fat visceral fat is the fat that lives around between the organs so it's usually it's in your torso um and it's around and it's surrounding the organs it's attached to the organs and it can affect how they work and it also puts you at a much higher risk of stroke heart disease um, and diabetes okay and we do have genetic predispositions to be um, higher in visceral fat than others based on like genetics um, can be anything from um it can it can be down to sort of where you came from around the world um genetically um but it, how we lose visceral fat is exactly the same as how we use any fat it's a little bit like saying i want to lose the fat from my bum but not my boobs okay it doesn't matter where you want to lose your fat from the process of losing fat is the same it's about being in a calorie deficit. It's about not eating more calories than we need each day. And it's about managing that in a nice, healthy way, which is why at AbFab, we encourage you to train, to do functional fitness, and to have enough protein in your diet to maintain your muscle mass so that we focus more on losing the fat. Where it goes from, nobody knows, okay? And again, that comes down to genetics. Um, it's nothing to do with what you eat. It comes down to genetics. Um, and your body type and you just have to keep plugging away and watching that overall body fat mass coming down to help with that visceral fat levels okay now there has been a little change on the in body of late the um, system went through an update so previously it had a maximum level of 20 and it has now gone up much higher i think it's it's at least 25 now so what you might have found and this is for joanne um is if you were at the very top of the scale and it hasn't ever changed actually you might have been higher than the scale actually the machine already went to so it gives the visceral fat an arbitrary score okay so if you were already at the top it unfortunately isn't going to move okay um, visceral fat though if you are losing from everywhere else um, we do say that one um, we expect you to lose one point on visceral fat every four to six weeks okay 
Um, so if you're following the program and your body fat mass is coming down, we expect there to be about one point drop every four to six weeks. And it's usually more around the six weeks. Sometimes if you're really going for it and you know, you're really losing that, um, that fat mass quite quickly, then yeah, you might get a couple of points off in the six weeks. It can happen quite quickly and then it sort of plateaus and it gets a little bit harder to lose. But again, it's just about that consistency. It's about maintaining that diet and those good exercise habits and lifestyle habits. Okay, so visceral fat, a little bit like trying to lose fat from certain parts of your body. You can't pick where you lose fat from. It's just about applying those healthy nutrition principles. Okay, any questions that have crept up in that at all? Oh, well done, Sam. You've increased your um, stomach. Your t Well, so let's talk about that. So on the embody, let me get the phone out. This is going to be, um, I wonder if I can change this. I should have thought about this earlier. I should have switched the camera view so you could see me the other way around. I'm going to bring up on my phone um, the embody, and I'm going to just talk you through some of the sheets. Um, I was going to bring that. I was going to print it off, um, but I didn't bring the right paper home, and it would have just confused me even more. So, um, on the embody, how are we? Are we all happy using the app? If you've got any questions about the app, um, I'm more than happy to help you with that. Uh, right, view original embody sheet. So. Let's see if that sort of works. Turn it a little bit. Hey, there we go. Okay, so let's talk about this section. This bit at the top talks about your total mass and what makes up your total mass. Okay, what makes up your total mass is the total amount of water in the body, um, which we've covered. Um, for building the muscles, how much protein's in your body, um, how much minerals for, and for strengthening the bones. Um, there is and your body fat mass which is obviously for energy and then the sum above of all of those things okay so you've got the minerals for your bones like it's all about your your overall weight but I think it was quite important to highlight those things that can influence weight like I say what you've been eating and that usually is for a few days okay um, and how you've been what types of food and things you've been eating and how they travel through your body Going on to the next part down where it says muscle fat analysis. Mm, uh, there we go. Yum. This part here. We There are types of curves that we can see that relate to your body type. So we have the weight, which is your mass, um, your skeletal muscle mass, and your body fat mass. So if you have the skeletal muscle mass, sorry, I'll try and get better at this. The skeletal muscle mass sticks out the furthest. If you're looking at this the right way, it looks like the curve The curve goes this way, which looks like a capital D. And we call that D for developed because your muscle mass is more developed and your fat mass is lower. We expect to see this in more athletic people. You can still have a D curve um, and have be over on your fat mass. Um, so that's something to be aware of um, but generally if you've got more muscle mass than fat mass it's a really good start um, if you look closer into the um, graph areas which you have the 100s dead center in the middle 100 that is the ideal place to be uh, for health okay um, and we're talking about where we fall into those. As we go into the next block down, we have obesity analysis. Now on here, they have body mass index and body fat percentage. Now in body even say that body mass index, BMI is outdated. Um, but because so many health things still relate back to BMI, they still include that information. So your doctors will still talk about BMI, but BMI is quite simply um, a sum. And it is a sum, it's a ratio of your height to weight. It has no impact on how much muscle is in your body, how much good tissue is in your body. So like I said earlier, there could be two of me stood here that are the same weight. One of me might have 25% body fat and the other one might have 40% body fat. We're going to look different, 
but our weight overall and our height is exactly the same but the BMI score is going to be the same but our health implications are very different so if you've got us on the in body and you look at our body fat percentage you're going to realize that one of us is in the healthy element and the other one of us is at a high risk of um, heart disease because their visceral fat will be much higher as well Yeah, so yeah, with visceral fat, Joanne, the lower the score, the better. So going back to visceral fat, um, which I will, put, I was going to touch on anyway, um, we recommend the score to be below 10. So aiming for 9 would be a really good goal for you to set. Um, but, and it will consistently come, but you're going to have to really kick um, the body fat. Try and increase your muscle mass as well because it's going to make you more um, more of an engine that's firing on all cylinders. And by that I mean the more muscle mass you've got in your body, and um, the more energy your body needs to be um, alive every day to keep the muscles alive, you burn more calories even at rest. So you're going to continue to keep taking away from that fat percentage. You could well be quite close on the cusp. Like I say... <coughs> Um, it can take six weeks for one point to drop, um, yeah, on that visceral fat. So, body fat percentage, that is the percentage of your body that is fat, okay? What happens if, um, it, so that is my body fat percentage. It doesn't have on that graph my body fat mass. That's on the one above, okay? So what happens if I um lose body fat and i also lose muscle but i lost more muscle than body fat what happens to my body fat percentage does that make sense i'm going to just see how many of you are actually listening are you ready answer for me please in the comments i want some answers um what happens if i lose oh joanne that's brilliant hang on hold on Joanne has not stayed at 11 for ages. She started at 14 and she's now at 11. Well done. That's wicked. How long um, How long have you been with us, Joanne? That's really good. You are nearly into healthy. In a sort of 8 to 12 weeks, you could have that below 10. Okay, you could be into the lower health risk category. How cool would that be? Joanne, that's so good. Well done. Oh, I'm really pleased that you actually had a look as well. So this live like helps you realise that. Brilliant work. Like I say, four to six, four weeks if you're really, really on it. Six weeks is much more like normal. And if on that six weeks you have a couple of weeks that go off the scale, then the visceral fat's probably going to get halted on its progress as well, okay? But don't worry about it. It's about that long-term change overall. September. Oh, well done. So you've been with us sort of six months, coming up to six months. Um, that's really good. Well done. Okay. Where was I? That was so cool. Um, okay, quiz time. So if you were listening, you might have thought about it a little bit. So I've been dieting and training, but I might have only been sticking to the same weights. I haven't picked up any extra weights. And I probably didn't make my protein um, a target. Um, and as a result, I lost weight. This is, this is me talking hypothetically, okay? I lost weight and um, my muscle mass and my fat mass went, both of them went down. But I lost more muscle mass than fat mass. What happened to my body fat percentage? Answers on a postcard, please. Going to look at the comments, waiting for a comment, waiting for some answers. Let's get involved. I've kept it simple. I didn't go into the real nitty gritty maths, but I'll explain in a second. What happens to my body fat percentage? Yes, Sam. Correct. My body fat percentage will go up. So let's look at some numbers just for just for just for giggles, okay? If my overall weight was, say, if my overall weight was 100 kilos, okay, and my skeletal muscle mass was um, 25 kilos, okay, and my body fat mass was 25 kilos, okay, I'd be like 50% fat. 
then I lost, let's just do some really arbitrary numbers. I lost five kilos, but I'm going to try and do the maths in my head now. I should have written this down in advance. I had a lovely idea about this. Okay, I lost three kilograms of muscle and two of fat. Okay, which changes my overall weight to 95 kilos, but my skeletal muscle mass is 20, hang on, where was I, 25, 22. And my body fat mass is now 23. So I'm now more like 55% fat mass and 45 percent muscle okay but overall i lost weight overall and i've probably been coming down to my healthier parameters but i lost a load of muscle mass okay i lost more muscle mass than fat mass so my body fat percentage went up if this happens to you ladies what you need to do is continue to eat and focus on your protein and continue to train if you don't train the muscle mass will wane and your body will use your muscle for energy instead of using your fat stores okay the other thing the great thing about protein not that this is a nutrition talk today but protein takes more calories to convert into energy it's more thermogenic than your carbohydrates and your fats anyway so just by eating protein and having to convert it into energy takes calories what's not to like okay any more come on ladies keep those goals coming up in all right yay hey Karnan. see you got it right well done so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense okay body fat percentage some of us get a little bit upset about it it's gone up okay but generally sometimes sometimes if we are um in you know if we are if we have a longer journey than others, if we've got more weight to lose than other people, sometimes we do um, have to lose a little bit off of that muscle mass overall if it is extremely, extremely, extremely high and our, mass, and our, uh, and our fat is very high, then sometimes it does have to come from this. It's not always completely possible to not lose that, but it's about trying to not lose all muscle and no fat, okay? Okay, let's go on now to the pictures, the little muscly pictures. i bring up my little... The little pictures. So the first one, jing, 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 jing. Oh, look, I cannot do left and backwards cameras. The first one, segmental lean analysis. Lean analysis is where are the muscles, how well distributed is your muscle mass in your body? Better way of putting it. Okay, so over is good on, on lean, okay? Lean is muscle. If we're over, it means we have a little bit more than the average person would for our height and weight okay and over to get a really good in body score you need to be as much over on lean as you possibly can the more muscly you are um, and the more your body fat mass is in the middle of the normal category and the higher your muscle mass is the better your in body score will be and that is the pure success really of that because everything else will fall into the right place because of it so on those scores you have how much in kilograms um, is muscle and um, that's the top reading and then you have where that falls in the percentage so remember i drew showed you on that graph you have 100 in the middle well if you then imagine so i've got here on my arm say 120 um, that puts me into just into the over category. Um, what's really nice is you can compare your left and your right and you can see if one side is stronger or has more muscle mass than the other. We can quite often relate that back to if you've had quite a significant injury and um, if, you, if you are really dominant on one side more than the other, which is a really nice point to highlight. Um, maybe training the weaker side, making sure that we continue to push the weaker side to catch up with the stronger side as well. Um, if there is an injury and there is pain, you should not train if it is painful. Okay, but if it is pain free and just a little bit weak, it is a great thing to try and strengthen. Um, and yeah, you have that for your torso. So where it says on your stomach, um, that is for your entire torso. Okay, so that includes your back as well as your front. Okay, so we like to think of it as our six pack muscles. Oh yes, I've got over on that six pack, but it's, it's your entire torso. Cause obviously we have muscles on our chest, 
you have your muscles on the sides, you have your back muscles, okay? But they're all really important muscles and it's really important that we've got a good strong core. It's all what makes up your core to have good muscle there. So that's really fantastic. I'm really pleased for you, Sam. And then the next picture to the side talks about your fat. It's exactly the same as the lean. Um, and you can compare the percentages and you can see how it's placed. Um, it doesn't really highlight about any um, uh, injuries or anything. Um, and we would expect them to be relatively similar. Okay, you have your long term. Oh, goodness, Claire. Still not learning how to use At the bottom, you have your tracking of your information. There we go. Um, again, look at the long term goals. Don't look, look at the long term tracking. Don't go that's affected me, that's one day, and oh, I went off the wagon there, you know, let's just, I mean, I'm all for saying to you, if you don't want to look at your in-body results, don't look at them, it really doesn't matter, like, if you know you're on plan, and you don't want to be affected by it, don't look at them, I'll look at them for you, um, and the gym managers will look at them for you every six weeks, okay, um, and then we can review your goals then, okay, okay, on to the last couple of bits then, so, in body score. Oh, did anyone come back with me with my little answer for my quiz? What is the female body fat percentage range? In percentage, what is the recommendation for ladies? Over on lean is great. To get a good score, you've got to be over. I know over sounds like you're over, like it's too much. Um, it just means that you have more than the average. And just being average isn't good anyway. Um, we wouldn't encourage you to do something that isn't healthy. Like, say, to get the best in-body score, you need to have as much muscle mass as you can and your fat mass in the most, in the back, smack bang in the middle of normal. So if your fat mass goes into the under category, you will lose points off of your in-body score. Okay? So the in-body score is made up of all the things about being healthy and if you don't have um if your fat mass has gone under your in body score is going to go down okay there's something else i wanted to say to you ladies and i think we might be introducing something in the gym to help us with this but please make sure your height is right so if you can measure your height at home in centimeters please do um because we talked about bmi but obviously the machine, while it sends a current through your body to measure these things, it's also using the information that you've put in regarding your height, okay? Then what I want you to remember is, if you do change your height, don't be surprised that the results suddenly will go a bit bananas. Um, they just will be more accurate. But I was looking, there have been a few people that I've looked at and thought, oh, is that height correct? Um, yeah. And these things are um, little calculations and they will make a little difference if they're not right. Anyone else? So, come on, what is the female's muscle and fat percentage guidance? Yeah, well done, Sam. Getting stronger in the back is really important. Um, really important for people, especially those who sit at a desk. Okay, having good activation in those muscles in the back means that our ch chest and shoulder muscles aren't as tight um, and it helps prevent shoulder injuries. Okay, it's 18 to 28%, you silent ladies. 18 to 28% is your body fat percentage, guys, for females. Okay, so again, to make sure a smack bang in the middle of that will help you get that perfect in-body score. For those of you who wondered how you get the perfect in-body, the perfect in-body score actually doesn't exist, the highest in-body score, okay? Um, there isn't a perfect in-body score, you can just have higher and higher the higher you will score the better it is it has been said that very muscly people um with the perfect body fat percentage can score over 100 um and i have been through so i went through um the the teams um in body scores and um mark at one point had nearly 100 he wasn't far off 100 um but it does go if the the readings all, all readjust as well. So it's about having that really high muscle mass and that spot on perfect body fat percentage. Okay. 85% Cardin. No, fat mass, my love. 
between 18 and 28 percent is a guide of healthy fat body fat percentage um, for females so it isn't a number it isn't a single number it's a guide between 18 and 28 percent body fat um, will put you into the healthy category any lower than 18 percent um, the reason why females need to have um, a higher fat mass, a higher fat percentage than men, is um... <laughs> Garn is hoping to get done. Sorry, we need a higher fat percentage than men to support um, childbirth, childbirth late mm, gestation, pregnancy. Oh my God! Sorry. <laughs> comments are coming in and I'm looking at comments and I can't get my words out. So females have a higher body fat percentage naturally to uh, maintain normal reproductive cycles, to be able to support um, pregnancy and all the stages we need a higher uh, body fat percentage because if we need to then we have energy in the body to keep the baby alive, okay? <sighs> Right, what else can we talk about on the in-body? Um, so, if you are, do you know what? It doesn't matter. Do you want to compare to, you can compare to other people this in-body score if you want to, or you just track your own journey and your own progress, okay? But the things that will help are your body fat mass, okay? Your body fat in kilos being in the right, in the middle of normal for your, for your height, um and your muscle mass being as high as possible okay what else can i tell you basal metabolic rate we've discussed visceral fat quite good lengths i knew that would come up quite early basal metabolic rate what is bmr basal metabolic rate that is what the machine deems you are going to use at rest so if you did not move or do anything that is the amount of calories you need to stay alive okay how can we check why do we measure bmr um well it's a changeable depending on our body's um makeup and that's your fat mass and your muscle mass depends on your will affect your metabolism your bmr so like i said earlier the more muscle you have it takes more energy so it takes more calories to maintain that muscle and stop it dwindling away okay so you, that's why we train we train to maintain or increase the muscle we eat enough protein to help repair the muscle stronger and put a few more in there just you know you're not going to get bulky i promise you to god with the training we do you are never ever 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 going to get bulky um you're going to need to start taking drugs and training like an absolute lunatic for two hours a day to get bulky okay um in very specifically probably working at a maximum of four reps um for about two hours of the same muscle groups to get bulky you're going to need to eat probably 200 grams of protein okay what we do you're not going to get bulky but we do want to increase your muscle mass because the more muscle you have in your body the more energy your body needs to um every day to keep those muscles alive that helps bring up your metabolism and um, when you start exercising because you're getting all those processes going for your body you've got more toxins to flush out and all of those things all those metabolic processes in your body speed up okay when you eat eating healthier food as well it helps speed up your metabolism um, and then it gives you a recommended calorie intake now we have found over time that um, it is a little bit over generous if you've got weight to lose the calorie target um, it's not uh, it doesn't help you lose as many calories in a specific time frame which is why we'll use another calculator if you want to set specific goals on to how many kilos you want to lose in a certain amount of time we'll give you some guidance on that um, we're never going to strip them to crazy levels because that's not how we work um, but the uh, the in-body doesn't, it tells you a, a recommended calorie intake, but it won't say at what point you would expect to see your goals. So it could be quite a steady one. Um, okay. I feel like I have talked a fair amount. I don't know if there are any other questions. I've talked about the consistency, weighing regularly and looking for the trends. 
um don't put off those weigh-ins when you've been bad just get on sometimes sometimes you'll get on and think it'll be bad and it hasn't as changed anywhere near as much as you think and you go okay just got to get back on that carry on sometimes you'll think you've been fine and you might be having going through a stage your hormones might be doing goodness knows what um and holding on to stuff and your things don't seem as good you've just got to keep going trust the process okay honest to god the process works okay if you are doing following the process it will work if you're going wrong somewhere and you think you're following the process but you don't know that you're going wrong the best thing to do is to really track um don't forget the things that you use to cook things with so like um if you're just putting in your chicken sausages but you're if you're not grilling them if you're putting them in the frying pan don't forget you're going to have oil okay um if you haven't measured how much oil you know you've got to be quite cautious on certain things as well um what else can we chat to about that's not in body but that's where i've got to yeah did that help what i said Carmen, about the calories because i kind of was talking about that at the point your um your one came through it's not necessary to maintain scores it'll be to help you get to your goal but it hasn't set out the specific time frame that you will get to your goal hey ellie do you know what sometimes january is amazing for everyone because it's that new year and we all throw ourselves back into it and life's getting back to normal and then you hit this lull in the middle of spring which is actually probably when we've had the worst weather the last few weeks um and it's all a bit of a middle of it's a middle it's like that middle land where no one really knows what to do um ask my uh that's sort of in a way what i'm blaming my little not so great at running element um but I've picked myself back off when I'm going again. You know, we're not all, we're not all perfect. Yes, Cassie is the air fryer queen. Um, I just haven't grown to lot. I just got annoyed with how much space it takes up on the side and the noise. Um, but yeah, they're great. Anything you, but whatever you're using, try and measure it. You know. Don't forget about those calories that you're drinking, like whatever it is that you're drinking. You know, if you're drinking a full fat drink, um, there's a lot of sugar and calories in that. Um, fallen off the wagon. What does it mean, though? Is that everything, Ellie? We lost food and classes. Let's pick one of those things. I generally find getting the classes back then gets my mindset back um, onto the eating. But whatever you've got to do with the eating, you've got to plan it, you've got to go out and buy it. No matter what you do, if you say, I'm going to sit at home, I'm going to eat healthy this week. If you haven't been out and bought those healthy meals um, and you've fallen off the wagon, you're not going to be able to get back on the wagon. You need to have planned and planned to succeed by getting the right things in the cupboards. It makes it a hundred times easier. Anything else, my lovely ladies? If not, I will be leaving you. Any questions about the in-body? Anything at all? Anything at all? Uh, any questions about anything at all in general? I thought there's some really interesting stuff. Um, on the in-body. Um, but some of it might just blow your brains. But if you want some of those... Uh, um, some of those snippets do let me know okay I think we're going to leave it there then it's like we've had all our comments I hope you have lovely evenings I hope the toilet talk earlier on didn't put you off your dinner um, and I will see you all soon take care have great evenings bye bye